Hi guys, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. This time I'm using the Gale Song kit and add-on from the Scraptastic Kit Club. It's the kit for February. And in addition to that, I'm using some mixed media here. Uh, this footage actually took place a couple of weeks ago when my kit first arrived. I took a bunch of pieces of cardstock, what I thought were cardstock from the kit, but it turns out they were actually pieces from my stash. I, I had added some pieces because um, I wanted to, if I if I am gessoing pages like I'm doing right now with this credit card, just spreading it around like this. It's a little bit of a messy process and so I like to do several pages at once. I also did that heart die cut at the same time that you would have already seen on uh, another project that I did recently. And so now I'm just using a Heidi Swap mask, uh, that triangle mask there, which I love. And I am applying a product called Liquitex uh, Glass Beads Texture Effects. And I'm gonna show you a close up of the jar and the product itself in a few minutes. Um, but I'm just globbing it on and moving the stencil around so that it's basically, I wanted to have um, two lines of triangles down each, like one line down each side of the page. And that's what it looks like up close. Sorry, that was super fast. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you the jar here and I, you're also going to see my hands because of the way that I did the freeze frame. And so that's what it looks like. And there you go. And it does leave little tiny beads all over your fingers. So you have to wash up after you use it because it's very gritty. And uh, I use this a lot in art journaling. I haven't done art journaling in probably, I don't know, like probably more than three years. Um, but back when I did do art journaling, I used that stuff a lot. So I wanted to pull it out for my scrapbook pages. Those are all of the pages that I did that day. This is today. Um, and I also did a couple of other things that I've already used. Uh, but I, I pulled them all out here because I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. I knew I'd be doing something messy, so I took my old uh, grid mat. It's a Fisker's grid mat, but it's, it's upside down. Um, and these are Ken Oliver Color Burst. And these are a watercolor pigment. Um, it's a watercolor powder, I should have said. Uh, and I'm just soaking my paper right now. I put lots and lots of water and I'm just tapping a tiny, tiny bit of pigment and a little, a couple of drops of pigment go a long, long way. As you can see, just a tiny little sprinkle at the top is really enough to wash the whole page in color. So I really like this, but this is the first time I've ever played with this product. Um, I, and so I'm just playing around with figuring out, you know, how forgiving is it? Can I take some off if I want to? So I'm just kind of playing around with adding more water, taking off water, um, seeing how, how much water it takes to really dilute it and what it looks like when you don't use very much much water at all. So I'm really just playing at this point because I've never used this product before. All of my mixed media products are very, very old. They're, they're well, I guess not very, very old, but they're old for me. I've only been scrapbooking since 2009 and I started mixed media right around the same time. And so all of my products are from then. And there's really so many more exciting products on the market these days that I really wanted to try some of them. So I got those Ken Oliver Color Burst uh, powders. And I also got some Tim Holtz crayons there that you can see. I'm actually not going to use those today, though. But I'll probably use them soon. So I really like the effect of the of the color burst uh, on my background. I wanted to add a tiny bit up here in the corner. <laughs> I ended up adding a whole lot. Um, and I, what I really love about this powder is that it actually separates because it's green. It has blue pigment and it has yellow pigment in there. And it, you can see that the blue and the yellow sometimes separate and I really love that look. It looks really interesting. I also really love, like I do with watercolor, I like to kind of let it pool up on my page and leave these little, um, it looks like little channels. Uh, it's, I really like it how it's, it's very kind of almost crisp on the edges and um, intense color. I just really, I don't know how to describe it, but I just really like how it looks when it pools and then you dry it with your heat gun and it kind of moves around a little bit and it leaves these lines uh, and kind of like a combination of really washed out color and then intense little bits of color with, with hard edges. I really like that. And of course, with the glass beads, it uh, sticks differently in the glass beads like it kind of goes all around the circles and stuff I really liked how some of the blue was showing in the in the 
in the powder and also some of the yellow but there was only one or two tiny little places where the yellow was showing and it was in both of the corners so I decided to um, add some yellow Mr. Huey's. Now the thing about it is that Mr. Huey's is water there's water in it so when it splashes on the page it's going to reactivate I'm just showing you a close-up of that package of the um, container that the powder comes in um, it reactivates and so it's going to mix a little bit so you're not going to get really crisp color differences like you do normally I'll let my I'll dry my uh, splatters in between so that then they can layer on top of each other and the colors stay true but here because I'm dripping onto watercolor a watercolor painted surface it's going to reactivate that watercolor a little bit so it mixes a little bit but I still really like how it looks so just naturally there seems to be I'm just gonna I don't want to wash my brush right now so I'm just wrapping it up there seems to be a really natural diagonal going on here so I'm gonna go with that diagonal in my background and you'll notice I flipped my page around a little bit that bottom left hand corner used to be the top right hand corner and because there's a darker section the section that I added last uh, I, I wanted it to be towards the bottom as opposed to towards the top I always do that I don't know if it's necessary but I feel like my project looks better if the darkest thing is towards the bottom of the page as opposed to floating up in the top and so I'm going to use these two photos and I just layered them so that nothing important was being covered by the corner of the other one and these are black and white photos that I don't know why I thought about that. Those paper clips don't make any sense on a layout like this. Uh, but I thought I'd try it anyways. So I'm just taking out my uh, ingredients list so that I can keep up to date with what I'm making here. Um, what I'm putting on my page and that just helps me with my narration. I'm actually holding that very page right now as I talk. So I'm just writing how I did my, my um, background and while I did it I just pulled out the products to show you because I could couldn't remember if I actually had that video footage or not so sorry for the repetition there so I was talking about the natural diagonal that I have going on so I decided to layer my uh, photos so that they sort of follow that natural diagonal that I had happening on my paper with the with the way that the color uh, the watercolor went and that is going to guide the whole rest of the layout really is that di that diagonal and with the I also put the yellow in the top and like in the top right hand corner and in the bottom I'm just pointing out that I didn't actually use the cardstock that came in the kit but I used a cardstock that's really really similar so I'm a little stuck here and you're gonna see me struggle with this because I'm not entirely sure I usually when I do mixed media I don't use a whole lot of, pa of pattern paper like the background paper is my main paper but in this case I wanted to do more of one of my tr my normal style of layouts which has lots of layered paper and I wanted to see if I can combine my regular style with lots of blocks of layered uh, paper under my photos with the mixed media look that I sometimes do where I don't really use very much pattern paper I just would put the photos directly on the background paper and then my embellishment would be mostly embellishments instead of papers so I really love this bold striped paper from pink paisley that came in the kit and I I think that I, I'm, I really love the contrast that that paper brings so I took two strips and I'm going to run one at the top and one on the bottom of this layout and I love to do this when I'm using black and white photos because black and white photos introduce a certain amount of contrast to your layout and having a black and white a bold black and white paper in your layout as well really helps to it's like it's repetition so it it gives it a cohesive um, feel like it all kind of belongs together so here I am struggling with how and how in the heck am I gonna layer these papers um, I'm finding the background paper very distracting at this point in the design process and so I'm cutting out a bunch of things that I'm not going to use including these floral cut aparts yeah no that's really not no <laughs> But, you know, sometimes you just have to try something 
to find out if it works or not. And I'm going to do that a lot <laughs> before I find something that works. And that's okay, because I love scrapbooking and cutting out these scallops was really fun, even though I'm not going to use them. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I love cut out scallops. It's one of my favorite things, but I just, I never use them. I don't know why. So yeah, that would be cool. I like that. But here I go cutting it down. And I mean, I want a certain amount of that paper to show because I'm, I'm really wanting to use the diagonal that is on that background paper. And if I end up covering up so much of it, I don't know. So I'm going with that uh, piece of that pink paper, by the way, is from Chamel's Starshine collection. It came in the kit. Everything here came in the kit. And then the scallop paper is, uh, is from Maggie Holmes from the Bloom collection. And so I'm kind of stuck at this point. I, I like how that scallop paper looks with the pink paper, but I'm not in love with that other scallop. Show. I'm, I'm, I like the bottom scallop, but I don't really love the top scallop. And so I'm playing around with repeating it. That doesn't make it really any better. And then I decide to take a couple of these cut aparts the yellow one, it says, um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then this hello love one. And that again, it, it's kind of accentuating the diagonal. So I'm back to the design that I really want. And then I decided if I just flip that paper around, I noticed that I really like the pattern and it blends nicely with the background pattern with the, with the background paper. And I, I don't know, I just, I like it. So I'm going to go with the back side of that instead of the side with the scallops, even though I love the scallops. And I'm playing around with where that beautiful thing is going to go. That just, it's, it's a die cut that just says beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's not a die cut. It's a cut apart. Sorry. <laughs> oh, so uh, I pulled out those phrase stickers because I'm definitely going to use them on this layout. And I'm just having a second look at some of the pattern papers to see if I'm missing something because I'm feeling, I don't know. I'm not sure at this point, but this is actually how it is going to end is like this. I'm looking at those phrases and seeing if there is anything that fits with the theme of the story that I want to tell for this layout. This layout is not only about Olivia getting uh, second place on all the events at the Tyso Cup. I also want to make a comment about how hard it was, how hard she worked just to get into the intermediate level of gymnastics. So there I go. I'm just using my ATG to stick those strips in place that I already described to you guys. And so, uh, yeah, I'll come back to the story when I do the journaling. But because of that, I, I want to, I'm mindful of, you know, the phrases that I want to pick out. I want them to be encouraging and I, I want them to talk about kind of hard work and change and kind of getting there type of that idea. I used my Stampin' Up! little stapler for, um, it's a, I think it's called a mini stapler. Uh, I'm going to outline my papers and that's going to give me a little bit more contrast on this layout. You guys know sometimes I will outline so that I it, it helps emphasize the differences between the papers and sometimes I outline uh, to bring everything together. In this case I'm outlining for contrast because I have those bold stripes on the top and the bottom and I just want to have a bit more contrast amongst my layers as well. So this this is a brand new black marker. It is a Stettler, no it's not, it's a Faber-Castell pit pen. And I'm so see, I like how those layers are layering, except for that part I'm pointing to right now. So those that cor that corner of corners there uh, is very awkward. So I'm going to go with it anyways, because I think I can put something over it to hide that awkward corner. So that's something to keep in mind when you're layering your papers. You don't have to do it perfectly because you can always fix problems after the fact. I liked how they lined up otherwise so much that I didn't 
I, I just thought, well, we'll just ignore it and I'll cover it later. And I'm thinking I'll probably use that yellow cut apart piece that says beautiful all over it uh, to do that. So I'm just leaving it there so that I can remember. I noticed that the mask that came in the kit this month has those plus signs on it. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to want, at this point in my process, I'm thinking I'm going to want gray pluses in my background on the diagonal. So down in the bottom left-hand corner and the top right-hand corner, but I'm going to change my mind by the time I go to do it. But that was my thought process at this point. So now when you stick your stuff down to a mixed media background, especially one with glass beads or any kind of gel medium on it, you need to use more adhesive. So that's why I'm using more than usual. I'm sorry about my head. My head is going to be in this layout quite a lot. I kept feeling the video camera on my head. So I definitely, um, my head is going to be in it more than usual. So I'm, I apologize for that. I'm, I'm in a bit of a limbo phase with my um, process video setup. I'm about to change some things. And uh, yeah, so anyhow, I'll do a video about it when it's all set. But for now, things are a little weird around here in my scrap room. So these are Heidi Swap. I'm pretty sure they're Heidi Swap. Yeah, they're Heidi Swap frames that came in the kit. And then I just put that little flag, the paper clip with the flag on it. And now after I put the frame in place, uh, there was a little sliver of the white showing and I could have left it, but I just thought it was bothering me. So I just took it off with the scissors. And I moved the flag so that it was kind of further in on that paper on on that photo. But when I moved it to the corner like that, it, it lines up perfectly with my diagonal. So it becomes part of the top right hand part of my di diagonal. And so that's why I moved it over there so that it kind of draws your eye up that way. So, so far, I've talked a lot about this diagonal idea. Uh, and that is kind of like a design principle is that you kind of choose a, a shape and then you kind of go with it and you you um, kind of repeat that shape or kind of work with that shape all through your layout. And then the second design principle that I'm using here is a, a visual triangle. And it's a very, very basic design principle. And I'm going to follow it very strictly on this layout. And uh, what I find when I'm using mixed media is I want, because the background is so complicated and and um, interesting and freeform and crazy, I want the rest of the layout to be very structured because of that. And that's just my own personal way of doing it. Um, I'm just, again, I have in mind that I want those, those uh, plus signs to be gray so I'm looking for gray ink it's not going to work because the the background paper is too bumpy I'll get back to what I was talking about in a second but so I'm trying something here that's totally not working just a, a ink dauber and uh, it's not working at all so I took a brush pen it's a pit pen from Faber Castell and it's just the brush tip one and I am just uh, basically tracing and filling in those little plus signs with the little mask that came in the kit. I added a couple of extra ones up there and then I'm going to put some here as well. And I'm purposely making them so that they fall underneath of the page so that it just looks a little bit more interesting. I don't want it to necessarily look like I put them there after the fact. So I'm just showing you my pen. I got them at the art store yesterday. That's why I'm using them. <laughs> you guys know all my pens were drying up on me. Every single pen I ever took lately has been like drying up. So I went and bought a whole bunch of new pens. It's a little bit of a boring purchase at the art store, but anyways... Uh, yeah, so I took this vellum label, these two vellum labels that you saw me kind of playing around with earlier, and I'm going to put them there. They were part of the digital files that come with the kit. So if you're not aware, if you are subscribing to the Scraptastic Kit Club, every month you do get digital files. You just have to go into your account and download them. If you have trouble with it, just um, ask on the Facebook group because uh, there's always somebody there who knows how to do it. Um, I don't get my files in the same way that members do so I'm not entirely sure where they're at but I think they show up in your account from what I hear or from what I remember hearing so I'm layering that Maggie Holmes 
a heart that's glittered that came in the die cut set that came with the kit. I'm layering it under some of the fringes of the fringed heart. That's also from Maggie Holmes. And then I have the two uh, layered vellum labels and I'm looking for something right now. Oh, I'm looking for the stencil because I decided that I needed, and I had the wrong pen there. I decided I needed another plus sign just because it looked too even. I keep thinking I might put that XOXO up in that corner, but of course that goes against my diagonal, right? So I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I'm that's why I haven't put it down yet, because I'm not sure. And I'm not going to end up doing it. So here are my letter stickers. I'm using the Fitzgerald. They're so skinny. They're so glittery. And they're so awesome. They're the Fitzgerald thickers that came in the kit. They're a pretty turquoise greeny color. And I'm spelling out Tyso Cup. It's not all that legible there on that, on that tag. So right now, I told you about the visual triangle, which is what I'm using for this page to give it some structure that will contrast with the free-flowing background that I have. Um, so I want to keep this structure quite carefully, which is why I don't want to go against that diagonal. But anyways, um, I'm putting these stickers, they are also, um, there's the strips of stickers, and they are also emphasizing that diagonal background because they're in those two corners. I like how those look overlapped like that, but the yellow was kind of throwing it off for me. It, it was the wrong color of yellow. So I picked that one up and replaced it with a pink. I really like the idea of layering those stickers, but it just, I, I just didn't do it this time. Maybe I'll do it next time. Yeah, so, and the other thing about putting those stickers down is that it kind of calms down the, that background paper a little bit right above those layers as well. So I've taken that swan flare badge and I've layered it. I haven't stuck it on yet, but I'm going to put it on top of the glitter heart. And that swan is there because of the, the whole idea of the swan being the ugly duckling and coming, you know, turning into a beautiful swan. And Olivia has really struggled with her gymnastic skills and she hasn't it hasn't always come easy to her and most things do come easy to her so I was very impressed that she uh, persisted and really worked hard to get into the intermediate gymnastics uh, club and so um, so I'm really proud of her for that and I just thought that the swan was kind of appropriate because it represents coming into your own and that's what I think Olivia is doing with her gymnastic skills right now. So I'm playing around with this third corner of my visual triangle. So one obvious cluster there is the one with the fringed heart and the swan. And then I'm going to put some more up above the title. So that will be the second corner will be right where it says tie so cup. And now this corner with the butterfly and the ampersand is going to be the third corner of that visual triangle. And I really like how these, these die cut pieces, they look like banners. Uh, I really like how they work especially because they're right next to her ribbons on the photo. And so it's sort of, I, I really like that. I love it when that happens, actually, when you, you have things kind of from the photo that come into your embellishments. And so I'm th it looks kind of weird to me, like it, it's kind of weird that there would be a flower on top of that. And I, I think I was just pointing out that I'll do my journaling there. Um, it looks a little bit weird and I stapled those so that they were too fat. So I don't, I don't want them to be quite that wide because they cover up one of the ribbons and they take up too much space width wise. I want them to be thinner. So I took them apart and restapled them. The butterfly is going to cover it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm using my ATG to just put some adhesive on the bottom part of the butterfly, stick the butterfly to the banners. Oh, it's a process, isn't it? <laughs> and now that is turning into a bit of a strange embellishment, I must say. It's kind of weird, but I, do, I like it. There's nothing wrong with weird. And I moved it, I positioned it so that the banners, the three banners under the butterfly are in line with the four banners on the photo. Just because I could. <laughs> 
And I had to play around with some foam dots in order to get those banners in the butterfly to be laying flat in the way that I want them to. And I couldn't get the glue to come out and then suddenly lots came out. So I had to take two craft paper or craft toothpicks and uh, pick up some of it and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> It does dry to clear that mono multi adhesive. When I look at the layout now, I can see where it was glued, but it doesn't really bother me that I can see the glue. So I'm having a look at the die cuts and I've decided to move that OXOXO, OXOX, uh, to down there because again, I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna leave it up in that corner anyways. Now that is too much, I think the glittery, the gold butterfly with the gold XOXO. And then I realized that I really want some repetition to be happening between the three parts of my visual triangle. So because I have vellum labels over in the, the corner by the, by the swan, I wanna put some vellum labels over in this corner and then I'll also put some vellum labels up in the top corner. So at this point I'm realizing that I have the triangle that I'm looking for, but I don't have the same repetition that I'm looking for. And so adding the vellum labels on each of those corners will help me get that repetition that brings it all together and makes it all look like it belongs. Now that's a better butterfly choice because it's not as gold sparkly as that big one. It's also smaller than the big one, so it works better there. So I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna figure out how those look good and then I'm just gonna use my stapler to staple it down low where you're not gonna see it. So I like how those are looking and I'm gonna get rid of that butterfly cause it's not gonna work there. And now, despite my better judgment, because my first impression of this was that these letters are not gonna look very legible on this black gingham tag. And I knew that that was the case, but I, you know, I see lots of titles that are not all that legible and they look great and you just have to look a little bit closer to read them and that's okay. And so I was kind of trying to tell myself, oh, I can do, I'll just do an illegible title. It's okay. Uh, but it's bugging me. So I took out my white gel pen and I thought maybe I can outline around those letters and that increases the legibility, but my white gel pen won't write on the glittery part that's behind the letters U and P. So I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do there. And then in the meantime, I'm sticking down my other embellishments for that third point of my triangle. And I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking I've got green on two of my points. So I've got the green swan, I've got greenish, I mean, it's turquoise, but the Tyso cup letters are green up in the top corner, up in the top corner there. There's also a green label there, uh, but I don't have green down in the other third point with the butterfly and the ampersand. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to do about that. And I think I'm cleaning up a little bit. Yes, I am cleaning up a little bit. At this point, I think I might be almost done. So I'm getting ready to do some misting. I'm going to mask my items with a little thing I got from Melanie in my mimosa kit. <laughs> little note from her. And also the packaging from my Pink Paisley, uh, one of the embellishments. It's just, they're actually the stickers are still on the sheet. And so I sprinkled, sorry that I didn't zoom out, but I did, trust me, I really did sprinkle some yellow taxi uh, Mr. Huey's in both of those corners. Again, it's the bottom left and the top right so that I can have that diagonal still going on even underneath of my triangle. Uh, and now I have Heidi Swap Black. And it's, it looks more natural if you sprinkle off the page. So, um, so that's why I moved my page a little bit so that the corner wasn't right on the corner of my box. I wanted the corner to be in the center of my box so that I could sprinkle freely. So I'm using my heat gun to dry those up. I love how the black ink looks. That, that Heidi Swap black is really, really black. I love it. Especially on a mixed media background because it kind of pools up a little bit on the, um, on the glaze from the beads. Because the beads are, of course, in a gel. So the Tyso cut, you know what? It just, it looks dark and dingy. The title, it's just not 
Ugh, it's not doing it for me. I forgot to turn on my camera when I did my journaling. So all that I did there was journaling. Um, and it says, uh, Liv worked so hard to get into the intermediate program. It was amazing to see her compete for the first time. From vault to beam to bars to floor, she did her best and earned second place on all events. So here I'm just looking at it and it looks kind of crazy random to me. It feels like, well, what I'm really focusing on is that I am not happy with the title. And so I, I was going to put some washi tape or something on that tag. And then when I saw how the P looked just on the pink paper, uh, that's that Chamel pattern paper from the Starshine collection. I really, really liked it. And I felt like this brightened up the layout quite significantly. It, isn't that amazing how that little difference makes such a big difference? Just moving the tag from there to underneath made all, all the difference in the world on this. Now I cut this ribbon way too short. So when you're cutting your ribbons, just cut them longer so that you have some some ability to like get it in the hole and stuff and play with it. And then you can always cut it shorter. So there we go. Now I'm actually gluing this on the top because I'm going to glue it to the layers above it instead of gluing it to the mixed media page behind it because it'll stick better to the things above it. And wow, that makes such a big difference. So here I think I'm done. So I'm showing you the close ups. I didn't bother to slow this down because I'm going to do more. So here I am, I'm looking at my corners and thinking, wait a minute, that corner with the ampersand does not have anything green. I've got the green swan in one corner, I've got the Tiso cup letters in the other corner, and then I needed something down here. So this sticker that says this is perfect. It's green. The greens are not all the same. They're slightly different from each other, but that's okay. They're spread around the layout, and it, I think it just balances nicely, just as it is. So, the, so then, of course, there's no yellow up in the top one with the Tiso cup. So I am cutting out a uh, scalloped, not a scalloped, a, um, what's that called? A pinked circle with my Martha Stewart punch. The, the paper just wasn't yellow enough. It looked a little beige. So I sprayed it with Taxi Mr. Huey's. And when I, it looks very vibrant, but then once I layer it under some things, it doesn't stand out quite as much. It balances off nicely with the ampersand and there's yellow in that fringed heart on the other corner. We've got yellow in each corner. We've got vellum in each corner. We have um, a flying creature in each corner. It's a swan in one and butterflies in the other. We've got glitter in each corner um, or gold foil in one case. Um, and we have uh, green in each corner. Now there was that little space see that space above Tiso cup that was annoying me and so I used my scalloped punch to and just a scrap piece of paper that was just it was from another paper in the kit that I had used up I just had a tiny little strip of it and so I'm just going to stick it into my layers on one side underneath of that frame and that just fills up that space quite nicely and I like how the skull I was gonna staple it but then I decided not to it would look really nice with some sewing there that would be the perfect place to add some sewing but I don't want to run mixed media stuff through my sewing machine so I'm not gonna do that I just drew on some stitches and because it kind of goes up into the air I just let the stitches fade off to nothing uh, because that's what it would be like if I actually stitched it they would just end so now Here's the real close-ups. I'm going to insert some pictures at the end as well. I haven't taken them yet, but I will get that done and put those in. So that's how this one turned out. I'm really pleased with it. Not because, not only because I, I like how it looks, which I do, but I had so much fun with this one. It was so, I love having the structure of um, an idea like I've, I had the diagonal and then that just guided me through most of the process and then I had the idea of the visual triangle and then that just guided me through so it it 
really was a fun process. This was notably fun to do. So I hope that you guys had as much fun watching this process video as I had creating it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave me a comment below. I love hearing from you guys. And check out our Facebook group if you're interested in our monthly challenge or even if you just want to come by, join the group and chat a little bit. That's fine too. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care and have a really great scrappy week. 